Today we're going to be making 10 Forkishes Overnight White Bread, so sit back and enjoy. Here I'm adding the water to the sourdough starter to make the levain. the whole wheat flour, followed by the white flour. Then I gave it a good mix with my spatula, make sure it was all incorporated very well. time for the auto lease. An auto lease basically lets the water and the flour mix together and hydrate the flour so that enzymes can begin breaking it down. So I added the water. Now I'm adding the different flours to each other. This is a white bread, but there's a little bit of other flowers in it just to give it a little bit more flavor. Now I added the flour to the water. Gotta get all of it, every last bit, <laughs> and gave it a good mix just to make sure everything got hydrated. I covered it with a dish towel to make sure that the moisture didn't leak out too much. Now it's time to add the salt and the levain to the auto-leased dough. So I added the salt first. Again, gotta get all of that. Every last little grain. And now, awkwardly, the levain. <laughs> I had a little bit of trouble, it was pretty stiff, um, but I, I, I got it. Next, I incorporated the salt and the levain. Just wetted my hand a little bit so that it, the dough doesn't stick to me quite so much. And you kind of do this folding over on itself thing where you take it, you stretch it out, and you fold it over. you kind of give it a good squeeze. You do like a pincer motion or as I'm about to do you can kind of just go all in and grab it with your hands and squeeze it. Have it come through your fingers. It's actually really satisfying. It feels quite nice. And then continue with your uh, your folding. And now I bring back the dish towel, cover it up with the dish towel. Yep, just like that. <laughs> Try not to get the corner in your water. <laughs> Now 
now it's time for instruction folds. Basically what you want to do with stretching and folding is you want to take the dough, firstly you loosen it from its sides so that you can really grab it. You want to pull it up and just give it a good shake as you do and make sure it stretches to its fullest potential and then slap it back down over itself. Stretch. And fold. For a second set of stretching and folding, you just kind of do the same thing as before. Stretch, fold. Stretch, fold. set of stretch and folds, just same as before. Wanted to do a test of the gluten, so after the last stretch and fold I waited about 10 minutes or 20 minutes, and you just kind of wet your hands to do this. You pull on the, uh, the dough and you try and stretch it out to see how thin you can get it. If you can get it really thin, it's good. I'm about to go into shaping here. I dumped out the dough. Made sure I got as much of it as I could really. But uh, there's no... I mean, you don't really have to. You take one end, flip it over about halfway. It still has a little higher hydration than I'm used to. So it stuck to my bench scraper a little bit, but I was able to adjust pretty quickly. Take the other side, flip it over, bottom, top. Flip the whole thing over and then shape into a bowl. the dough for about 20 minutes. Then I took my little shaker full of rice flour and white flour, AP flour, sprinkled a little bit over the top, and went into my shaping mode. I took one end, stretched it out, took the bottom two corners, and made a little bit of a triangle with them. Stretched out the top again to make it more of a triangle. Took the two corners, flip them over, and do some stitching with them, where you, you kind of diagonally bring them in. It was a little far away from me, so I, I scooped it up and brought it over. And then you kind of do the same thing with the bottom corners, and then take the top and fold it into the little crease between the two, and roll it up. If you were making a batard, this is about where you'd stop, you kind of make it nice and tight and everything, but we're making a bool here, so I went ahead and shaped it a little bit further. Next, I went ahead and I flowered my banneton, which had a dish towel placed in it. Used that same mixture, 50-50 rice flour and AP flour. I went ahead and I just plopped it right, the dough right in. Give it a good shake, make sure it's all nice and evenly in there. Now, because it was an overnight loaf, 
I woke up really early and I was really super tired and not thinking very well, so I actually forgot to film the part where I baked the loaf. But here is some of the after um, images and video that I took. out a little bit flatter than I was hoping. That could have been because I used a little too much water on my hands when shaping, but it was still a nice crusty loaf with good flavor and lots of sour tang.